Hey guys, Mr. Backberg here. This is lesson 5.5 and in this video we're going to be taking a look at inequalities within triangles and finding possible side lengths of triangles. The first thing I want to look at is a relationship between side lengths and angle measures within a triangle. So we've got an obtuse scalene triangle drawn out and there's really two things that I want you to notice about this. Um, the first one is that the longest side of our triangle and it's not just for this triangle, it works for every triangle. The longest side is always directly across from the biggest angle. So here we've got our obtuse angle, and like I said, across from that is going to be the biggest side. And it's going to work out the other way too. The shortest side of our triangle, which is across the bottom here, is always going to be directly across from the smallest angle. Okay, and like I said, this will hold true for any triangle. And really it's about how wide those angles are opening up. Obtuse angles or bigger angles open up wider, so they're going to end up creating long sides, and small angles don't open up as wide, so then it makes sense that it would be across from a short side. So let's take a look at this example where we're given triangle QRS, and we're given the side lengths of the triangle, and what we want to do is we want to take a look at putting the angles in order from smallest to biggest. So sort of like we just talked about, the smallest angle is always going to be across from the shortest side. So the shortest side is a length of 5, so that means across from it should be the shortest angle. So angle S should be the smallest. Now next we're going to look for the next biggest side. So down here we've got a length of 7, so across from that would be angle R, which means that angle R would be the next biggest angle. And then lastly, we've got this side length of 8 over on the right-hand side across from angle Q. Since that's the biggest side, angle Q is going to be the biggest angle in this triangle. Okay, so putting these angles in order from smallest to biggest, angle S, angle R, then angle Q. Now, this can also work in the opposite direction. So on this triangle, now we're given the angle measures, and we're going to put the side lengths in order from smallest to biggest. So first we've got this smallest angle of 35 degrees, which is angle J. So across from it should be the smallest side. So I would call that side HI. Then the next smallest angle is this 45 degree angle. Across from there we've got side IJ. And then our biggest angle is this 100 degree angle, so across from that biggest angle should be the biggest side, which I'm going to call HJ. So there's our three sides from smallest to biggest, based on the angle measures. Now, not every group of three sides can actually make up a triangle, but there's this thing called the Triangle Inequality Theorem. And the triangle inequality theorem kind of dictates what those three sides have to look like. So what the triangle inequality theorem says The triangle inequality theorem says that if you take two side lengths of the triangle and add them together, so the sum of any two side lengths, that sum has to be greater than that remaining third side that you haven't used yet. So let me draw out a triangle. So let's say we've got triangle ABC, like it's drawn out here. Then if we take two sides, let's maybe start with side AB and maybe side BC. If we were to add those two things together, then it has to be greater than that remaining third side that we haven't used yet, which would be CA. And we can do this with all the different pairs. So instead of going AB and BC, maybe we went AB and AC. That would still have to be bigger than the remaining third side, which runs from B to C. Or maybe we group things up a little bit differently. Maybe we go BC plus AC. That has to be greater than AB. Okay, no matter which pair of sides we decide to choose, when we add those things together, it always has to be bigger than that remaining third side. So what we want to look at in this example is, given three possible side lengths, can we form a triangle with those three side lengths? And we're going to use what we were just talking about, where if we add up two sides of the triangle, it has to be bigger than that remaining third side. So let's start with this one on the left, with side lengths of 2, 4, and 5. If we were to add up the first two, 
that has to be greater than 5. Well, 2 plus 4 is 6, and 6 is bigger than 5, so that works. Now, we should check all the pairs, really. If we add up 2 and 5, that's got to be greater than 4. Well, 2 plus 5 is 7. 7 is greater than 4, so that works. And then I guess our last pair of sides is 4 and 5. And if we add those together, it has to be bigger than 2. Well, 4 plus 5 is 9, and 9 is bigger than 2. So, yep, that one works. Now, if we take a look at these other sides, 2, 2, and 5, right away, if we add up those first two sides, 2 plus 2 has got to be greater than 5. Well, 2 plus 2 is only 4, and 4 is not greater than 5. So, no, we can't make a triangle with this one. But, yes, we can with this first set. In this last example, we're looking at a triangle where we're given two of the side lengths and we want to figure out what the third side length could look like. So this says that one side is going to be a length of 12, another side is going to be a length of 8, and we have to try to figure out something about that third side. So I'm just going to list these out. We've got a length of 12, we've got a length of 8, and we don't know what that other side length is. So I'm just going to call it x. Now there's a few different steps that we have to take to help us figure this out. Based on what we were just talking about, if we add up two sides of our triangle, that has to be bigger than the remaining third side of our triangle. So I'm just going to start matching things up. Maybe we took the 12 and the 8 right away. If we added those together, that would have to be bigger than x. Well, 12 plus 8 is 20, so 20 has to be bigger than that x value. But now we can move some of these things around. Maybe we go 12 plus x has got to be greater than 8. Now, if we think about solving this, we would want to get x all by itself, so I would subtract that 12 over. Now, our inequality ends up saying that x has to be greater than negative 4. And we're dealing with real side lengths. We can't have a negative side length. So this inequality right here doesn't really make any sense at all. So I'm just going to ignore it. And then the last thing that we could do is we could have the 8 plus x. And then that has to be greater than 12. Now this one we're going to solve to get x all by itself again. So we're going to subtract the 8. And we end up with x has got to be greater than 4. So we're ignoring that middle inequality because that one didn't make any sense. This is a triangle, so it can't have any negative lengths. So what we know is that our x value has to be smaller than 20, but it also has to be bigger than 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to write out one big inequality that says that. So we're going to put x in the middle. x has to be smaller than 20, but x also has to be greater than 4. So the side lengths of our triangle have to be somewhere between a length of 4 and a length of 20. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.